Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 309. You get the Nasdaq down 168. S&Ps are off 20. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Elliot. Uh, well, I'm back. Elliot is the senior vice president of Direction. Of course, we know Direction shares. We can trade both sides of leveraged ETFs. And in this particular case, because we're coming into option expiration tomorrow with 5.5 trillion notational value that is expiring, which is an 11 to 1 call versus put, folks, okay? This is going to get really intriguing. Elliot, welcome back to TFNN. Hey, Tom. Uh, great to be back. Thank you for having me on today. Absolutely. Well, it's a great day to have you, man, because you just heard those numbers. That's a pretty incredible number. And then on top of that, Elliot, we have, and I know we have the single stock futures, uh, ETFs rather, um, you know, Apple uh, plus NVIDIA, and that's the bear or the bull side, folks, at, you know, a, a 200 or, uh, well, the, the, the bulls are 200 and the bears are 100. Um, because what's going to happen at the close tomorrow also is that the XLK has to buy $12 billion worth of NVIDIA and sell $11 billion worth of Apple. So <laughs> I, I'm sure that you are going to have your hands full. So what do you think about, I mean, today we get the S&P, you know, back a little, but we already did hit an all-time high. So what are you thinking about the all-time high out here? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, a few days ago, we saw the, I think it was the 30th all-time high for the S&P this year so yes. far. Um, yeah, it did retrace uh, a little bit today. It doesn't look like we're going to have another all-time high. But, uh, no, it's, we've definitely seen a lot of pickup in trading in our S&P 500 leverage products. Uh, we have SPXL, triple leverage bull, yes. off the S&P 500, and then SPXS, the triple leverage bear. Um, we actually saw... Um, uh, SPXL was uh, last week, at least, uh, the, in our top 10 of our ETF suite of outflows. And, you know, you see that pretty commonly of uh, traders taking money and gains off the table um, when they see a run up, uh, especially in the triple leverage products. Um, but no, definitely uh, some exciting stuff. And, you know, what you mentioned with NVIDIA. Yeah, becoming uh, your know, world's most valuable uh, publicly traded company. And uh, we have that rebalance in uh, XLK where uh, NVIDIA has been a pretty uh, significant underweight, uh, you know, but with the market cap adjustment, um, it looks like NVIDIA and Microsoft will be the two heavyweights of both around 21% each. And Apple's going to, you know, as you mentioned, fall pretty sharply to, it says, right around 4.5% um, after that rebalance. So, yeah, a lot of activity in our single stock ETFs. Well, which is so cool. It's amazing, you know, that, and you guys were way ahead of the curve. I mean, you have, the, you, have, you have the best single stock futures that are out there. I mean, we're talking about NVIDIA, Tesla, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Meta. I mean, uh, it doesn't, Amazon, right? It doesn't get any better. It's like, okay, what side of the trade do you want? It's, it's really cool, man. There's no doubt. Now, yeah. hey, talk to me, because what, what also happened is that now the retail sales, everyone's been waiting for the consumer to, you know, basically... You know, give it up. And I can tell you through my career, I think they've been waiting for 40 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have dips, but you know what I'm saying? It seems like the United States consumer can always keep coming back. Now, I know this is flat, um, but just talk to me about it because we can also, you know, trade the consumer stocks either on the bull or the bear side. Yep. No, definitely. Yeah, we saw the retail, uh, U.S. retail spending. Um, I mean, it, like you mentioned, it didn't, it wasn't negative. Um, there was a very slight increase uh, in May of 0.1%, uh, and um, uh, the prior months were revised down. So it's, it looks like it's weakening, um, starting to weaken a bit, but still, you know, we're still seeing growth, and, you know, it's not a, a tremendous miss. But, uh, yeah, if you are looking to trade uh, some of the consumer discretionary stocks. Uh, we do have a triple leverage bull product. Uh, want is the ticker. Um, and we also do have the retail select sector. Uh, that is a triple leveraged uh, bull ETF as well. And that's RETL. Um, so, yeah, no, some, some diff, uh, definitely some interesting, uh, you yeah, know, we'll see how that kind of shakes out and if that has any, you know, impact on uh, kind of the Fed and, you know, where they're looking at with, uh, you know, the, the rate cycle. And, yes. uh, you know, it's more, um, you know, they said they've, they're going to be data dependent. So we'll see if, uh, you know, that adds some uh, fuel to the fire for them. You know, what's so cool, Elliot, is that 
you know, folks, when, when you set up these leveraged products, right, what happens is that you have to have swap lines and in behind the whole structure, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy in order to do that. Now, it's so cool that you guys don't have to worry about that, particularly on a day like tomorrow, right? I mean, because, you know, I, I said to the audience, I've seen these days, Elliot, that there's no disruption at all in the last hour, even when there's like four trillion, do you know what I mean? And then other right. days, it's like, okay, hold on, the last hour, we're going all over the place. So this one with NVIDIA and Apple is going to be so interesting because it's like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, they got to get as close to the close as possible in order to do it, to stay, you know, what the XLK was doing. It's like, how do you, how do you sell $11 billion worth of Apple? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. you know, <laughs> so this is going to be something else, man. I mean, it really is going to be something else coming to the close. And of course, when we look at NVIDIA, you guys are set up beyond belief. I mean, because the bottom line is that that we know hasn't stopped. I mean, we know, we know at some point it's going to stop. But it's really sweet that you can actually get into an equity like NVIDIA and, you know, get 200 on one side, 100 on the other. And I can understand that because the bottom line is that there's plenty of people that have been shot in NVIDIA all the way up. And, of course, even after they did a 10 for 1 stock split, it went... It went up another twenty dollars. It's like, oh my God! I mean, normally, not normally. You don't know what happens, but that was that was pretty incredible. Also, now we got to get to gold before we get off because we got all these folks that you know in the metal market, and you know, like last time we talked, it's really intriguing that inside the ETF structure there hasn't been as much action as there is in the actual physical gold. Now, my take is that that's going to start changing again. But of course, you know, we got the uh, the nugget, and we have the dust, and you know those that those are starting to get some big action, also, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. no, definitely. And what you mentioned, uh, you know, we've seen it all year where uh, the spot price of gold has, uh, you know, uh, advanced more than the miners, and the miners have lagged a little bit, um, but they have played catch up. Uh, but yes. Our, uh, our nugget and dust pair 2x on the gold miners and then even our uh, junior gold miners yeah. have seen uh, you know uptick in trading uh, JNUG and then uh, JDST uh, 2x bull and bear products yeah and the, and the clientele loves the the small caps too the, the, there's, there's no doubt because what does happen folks is that percentage wise when the juniors start moving, they move at bigger percentages because they're at smaller dollars, which affects the whole trade, which is so cool. You know, there's no doubt about that. And, and you know, that market, Elliot, is really so small, which is really cool. Right? People don't really realize, I think, how small a metal market is compared to, you know, you don't have to compare it to the S&P. You can compare it just, just to a couple other indices. But when you get it right in that sector, you can get it really right because once the run starts, it's, it's, a, it's a nice run. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. Those are great trading tools. Well, listen, this is always a pleasure. You know, thank you so much for the education. We really look forward to talking to you in the next few weeks. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Elliot. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You too. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 291. NASDAQ is uh, down 172. S&Ps are down 21. We got our man, Mr. Tim Ward, coming up next, folks.